Hi, this is Yosupin Bharti and welcome to another episode of an Eye on AI. Today we have with us Pavel Hitri, CEO and co-founder of Spacelift. Pavel, it's good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure as well. And since you are a co-founder of the company, so I would like to quickly remind our viewers, what is Spacelift all about? So Spacelift is an orchestration platform for infrastructure as called deployments. So at a very high level, we make it easier for infrastructure teams, be it SREs or DevOps or infrastructure engineers to make their infrastructure deployments either via Terraform or OpenTofu or Pulumi or CloudFormation, uh, pretty much effortless, automated, and with the right guardrails uh, around you know, the infrastructure. Now let's talk about the announcement that you folks uh, recently made, Saturn had AI. Um, talk a bit about what it is and what benefit it brings to, of course, DevOps teams who are working on infrastructure as code. Southern Head AI is, is a purpose-built AI assistant specifically for teams that do deployments of infrastructure as code. So it's embedded within space of workflows um, and it really helps generate infrastructure as code. It helps review, refactor the code. Um, and what's really special about the Saturn Head AI is that it's trained on um, data that is very specific to DevOps and infrastructure deployments, right? So it's trained on domain-specific content, on policies, uh, on everything that's already happening in your infrastructure deployments. And it's also secure by design, right? So it understands what are the sensitive parts of your infrastructure and where the, the parts that can't be leaked, that can't be exposed. So, so it's a very much, you know, built on domain specific content uh, AI assistant that helps those specific teams manage their uh, deployments better. And when it comes to uh, teams that start using, you know, of course, uh, AI assisted, you know, co-writing, what are the challenges that they typically face? Because there are a lot of uh, things that uh, a lot of folks won't want to talk about. I don't even want to talk about wipe coding uh, here. But in general, uh, when it does, you know, as you said, secured by design itself, uh, when the code is generated by AI or, you know, you are living, uh, there are a lot of things that might slip through. And so how do you ensure that it is actually secured by design? So what I mean by security by design is, is about exposing um, any, any secrets uh, that are connected to the infrastructure, so making sure they're not exposed because there are many pieces of the infrastructure that need to stay uh, you know, confidential that can't be exposed or they shouldn't be exposed to certain users in the organization. So it ensures that those things are contained. Um, and, and I think you're pointing right that, um, you know, AI can still sometimes hallucinate, which is why a big piece of what Serhat AI does is really about suggesting and showing potential errors and suggesting and recommending potential paths to remediate. So it's not really, you know, it's not really solving the problems, it's assisting uh, the developers because Infrastructure itself is a very sensitive topic, right? I mean, if your infrastructure is down, that means your entire company, doesn't matter if you're in technology business, right? I mean, all the logistics or the commerce, everything operates and needs infrastructure to be operating. So we make sure that there is a certain level of supervision, but the benefit that the end users get from using the assistant is that they don't need to manually scroll for things spent endless amounts of time looking at the results, rolling back, it's okay. Hey, based on those results, we're able, the assistant's able to tell them, this is what happened, and those are the possible steps you can take to remediate, and instead of spending 20 minutes on this, you're gonna spend two minutes, because you'll be like, okay, this makes sense. It's the right solution, let's do it. Since we are talking about AI, and of course, these days, almost everybody talks about AI-powered assistant, whether it's co-pilot, so a lot of you know, tools that like, all of us use that. Uh, how is, you know, uh, kind of Saturn had 
different from other AI powered co-pilots or assistants? The way it's built, so there are multiple, there are multiple points here. Uh, one is it's built on multi-agent uh, architecture, right? So it's not pure LM, it's built on multi-agent architecture. Um, it's very domain specific. It's integrated with your Git repo, with your CI CDs, with your pipeline, with your policies, with you know all the frameworks via provider, with Terraform, OpenTofu, and so on. And it learns from your entire history that you're doing and what you've been doing with Spacelift, right? Uh, so it learns your behaviors. It learns how you approach managing infrastructure and how your organization approaches managing infrastructure, the risk level you might be taking as your as the organization, uh, the patterns, it's learning the patterns. So it's very context specific on the particular use cases you have in managing your infrastructure. And just to give you an example, you know, we're talking about organizations doing, you know, having millions of infrastructure resources, managing infrastructure in many different ways. I would risk a statement that every single of our customers, you wouldn't find the two of them that match infrastructure in exactly the same way. So this is very much custom AI assistant that learns how you manage infrastructure and improve based on the context it has from, from how, you, how you manage the infrastructure. And in the beginning, when we were talking about uh, the company and the announcement, you also mentioned that it doesn't matter, you know, whether you are on Terraform, Pulumi, or OpenTofu. Can you talk a bit about uh, the inner working of it and uh, how does it, you know, seamlessly integrates without breaking the workflow of DevOps teams, irrespective of once again, what, what, you know, what kind of infrastructure code they're working with. You can think of Spacelift and it goes, goes back to Spacelift, right? We are a layer that sits on top of any infrastructure as code solution or framework you can work with. Think a bit of, uh, of Spacelift as a bit of like a turbocharged specialized CACD for infrastructure as code deployments. Um, and um, what this means is it, it doesn't really, it, it doesn't really matter which code we work with as long as we have access to it and we can understand what's happening there and what are the changes you're making. Uh, because, you know, we are framework agnostic, but, and the benefit here for the organization as well is that, you know, for us, it really doesn't matter, right? Like the way we build the product, we build a separate space lift and we also build separate head AI is that it works with any code, any infrastructure as code framework and code you might want to work with because you know different uh, infrastructure as code frameworks uh, have different use cases and are better for different use cases. So um, we're completely language framework agnostic and the same applies to certain head AI. Of course, the announcement was made recently, but sometimes you folks do work with a lot of, you know, clients in the back. Can you talk about some of the use cases that you have seen of Saturn Head where you say, hey, this is this is what it was intended to do. This is how it's solving their problem. Or where you saw some use cases, you were like, oh, we were not even expecting that a company will use it in that capacity. So if you can share some of those use cases, that will be great. The most prominent use case and the, more, the biggest benefit that everyone talks to us about is really, this is saving me so much time. Right. I, I used to spend so much time analyzing my deployments, trying to see what really happened there. And now I have very clear solutions. And to some extent, I don't need to do or like I don't need to execute. The only thing I need to focus on is decide, decide which solution or which approach recommended by the assistant is the right move for our infrastructure. And this saves a tremendous amount of time for, for the engineers. So the feedback we've got, of course, it's been only uh, you know, a very short period of time, but we also had some beta uh, testers beforehand, was how much time it saved on a daily basis to be able to, to, to do those things much faster. Now let's talk about your partnership with Knox uh, to uh, you know accelerate FedRAMP compliance and also bring, you know, Infrastructure's code to Knox portfolio. Talking about this partnership, the scope. At the moment, there is no solution in the market 
that is provides secure compliant AIC workflows for those who are in the government or they need to be federal compliant. There is none. There is not a single one in the last couple of years. We partner with Nox Systems um, in two areas. One is we uh, are trying to accelerate our path to be federal and compliant as a solution and be the first solution in the market and will be the first solution in the market that will provide federal compliance uh, to, to the end users. And two, also we're providing a solution to the customers of Nox systems to do workflows and create workflows in a secure and compliant way for infrastructure as code. So uh, it's a great partnership that benefits uh, everyone. It benefits us and it helps us thanks to Nox system to be federal compliant much faster. Uh, two, it lets Nox systems build you know, piece of their product in a in a better, more efficient manner that is also federal compliant, but also it gives a proposition for the end users, those who need to become federal compliant, that they have a solution to manage the infrastructure as code deployments in a federal certified environment. So um, we're looking, you know, forward to what this partnership brings, but it is going to benefit everyone in the industry, and I. I will tell you there's so many companies and government organizations that have been coming to us over the last 12, 18 months saying there is nothing in the market. We would love to find some something that is federal certified and here we are trying to build a solution and deliver it as quickly as possible to the market. And since you did mention that, can you also talk about the trajectory of the company's growth over the years where you are seeing a lot of demand, given the fact that it is kind of current market, there are a lot of players, there are a lot of open source projects also. Open to for the great recent example, it which emerged because of all the drama that happened with the Terraform there. Uh, so talk about uh, the adoption, the growth of the company in the last couple of years. Over the last couple of years, the company was started in 2020 and we did go live the product in 2021. Um, in the very early years, uh, we've had a lot of customers in the technology sector, but especially in the last couple of, of years, we're able to get more of a Fortune 500 customers. A lot of enterprises are adopting infrastructure as code at scale and they realize they need a solution like Spacelift. So we've seen tremendous growth we work the likes of uh, ICE, New York Stock Exchange. Uh, we work the likes of Affirm, uh, Klarna, Figma, uh, and a lot of large customers in sectors like commerce, healthcare, financial services, um, and so on. So, so we've seen tremendous growth. What's really interesting to me and could be very interesting uh, to the viewers, to the audience, is that this industry is still pretty early. There's still a lot of companies that are doing things in a manual ways. There are still a lot of companies and users that are at an early stage of their journey uh, with infrastructure as code. Uh, but air, all of them want to use infrastructure as code at scale because it's so much better. Um, so in terms of our growth, we've been very happy uh, with the growth for the last couple of years, especially, uh, you know, seeing some of the larger brands that, unfortunately, I can't name some of them, but uh, but seeing larger brands adopting Spacelift and, and being happy with the product, enjoying the product and, and the benefit and the value that it gives them. Now let's just talk about, you know, uh, ISE conference, uh, what inspired, uh, what led to the creation of this uh, event? Uh, there are a lot of events already happening, you know, around the, especially in the US and around the globe. Uh, what, what, what are the gaps that you still see that are there, which you feel uh, like, you know, filling? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. There are lots of events happening. But surprisingly, there has never been an event dedicated to infrastructure as code practitioners. Uh, I know it sounds very strange, but it's never been. So we did identify the gap that uh, we, of course, spoke to our users, spoke to prospects, spoke to people who use infrastructure as code. 
And it really felt like there was no space for people to come together and exchange best practices and uh, ideas. So we decided to fill the gap and we are organizing uh, the first ever in the history of the world infrastructure as code conference that is happening on May 15th. Uh, we already have a few thousand uh, signups uh, for the conference. We have great speakers coming and we're really hoping to create this and, and keep it as an annual event where people who use infrastructure as code at scale can come together and exchange ideas. So we were extremely excited to, to, to see, um, you know, to see the, the feedback from people and, and hopefully everyone benefits. What kind of trends you're seeing in the market or what kind of adoption, what role of infrastructure as code you're seeing throughout organizations uh, where you're like, hey, this is something which is more or less like a paradigm shift that we saw something with Docker containers or then Kubernetes. So, so the trend we are seeing is that people consider infrastructure as code nowadays, not only as part of the toolkit and solutions like space as part of the cool toolkit, but really part of the bigger strategy. And what strategy means is they understand that adapting solution like Spacelift affects the whole organization, right? Because it does help organizations manage costs wisely. It does help them figure out how to quickly deploy it. So really how to increase developer velocity and increase the velocity of them shipping applications and infrastructure, which is connected to the application. Uh, so this is a trend we've been seeing. So a lot of more CIOs, CTOs, and CEOs are asking about how does infrastructure fit into the whole picture and how will solutions like space to help them achieve the business goals. So we've been seeing this trend kind of intensify over the last two or three years. Um, and it's becoming more of a you know, high level discussion uh, within management teams that this is something that is a very critical part of the business uh, nowadays, not only another tool that costs money that we need. Of course, you folks just made this announcement last week and we did talk about a lot of things. But can you just also talk about what are the things that Spacelift is working on? Of course, you cannot disclose a lot of things. We'll talk about it when it's ready. But just, just give us a glimpse, a teaser where you do see hey, this is the problem that the industry is facing, the ecosystem is playing, and we need to solve that and we'll be working on it. So just tease us a bit. What are the things yeah, that are the pipeline? One problem that we are looking at as the organization is we call it day two operations in infrastructure. And what we mean by this is uh, how do you, you, know, you can provision the infrastructure, but then there's so many operational things that you need to do with infrastructure, with how you take care of all the resources and your all environments. And what we're working on and, and we'll be releasing it very soon is, is a solution that doesn't exist in the market that will really help infrastructure teams with day two operations, updating things, updating databases, really making their life simpler beyond purely managing infrastructure deployments. So stay tuned, but uh, we think it's going to be super exciting. Uh, and, uh, we hope that, that people will enjoy what they see. As I said, there's nothing like that in the market, and uh, we think we'll be solving a very big problem for uh, the infrastructure teams. Excellent. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Talk about the company, your new announcement, the event, and the whole infrastructure code landscape, how it's evolving. Thanks for those great insights, and I look forward to chat with you again, because as you rightly said, you know, there are a lot of things in your pipeline, so we should talk about them. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.